Hello dear learners, welcome to Massive Open Online Course on Swayam on Reading Skill Part 4. I am Heman, ICT Consultant at CIET NCRT and today we will learn about the importance of reading and different reading strategies that all of us use when we read different types of text every day. We have with us Professor Kirti Kapoor from the Department of Education in Languages. She will be discussing with us about the importance of reading and different reading strategies. So ma'am, as we are supposed to talk about reading and what are the reading strategies, I think we should tell our learners what is reading. Okay, yes, we start with that. Right. Uh, and thank you. Let's begin with what is reading. As we now understand that reading is a multifaceted process involving word recognition, comprehension, fluency and motivation. Right. Reading is meaning making. Please remember that. From print, it requires that we identify the words in print, a process called word recognition, construct an understanding from them. It is a process and this process is called comprehension. comprehension. So before we begin with this unit, right. I think we should recapitulate what we did in the third yes. module. Right, we were discussing about topic sentence and all right. of that. Right. I think uh, Human, you can recapitulate that and then we will connect this module we'll with, with the that. previous module. Sure ma'am. So in third reading module, you were introduced to different techniques or strategies of finding the topic sentence, main ideas and supporting details. You were also made aware of how to recognize and identify the author's purpose and tone of writing. So uh, if we consider all these things and if we consider today's reading skill that is part 4, we can definitely connect what all strategies we are supposed to take care uh, and while reading so that we can make reading more comprehensive. Yes. Uh, so now we are moving ahead. Right ma'am. Like as you have already shared it with the students in our previous module, we had talked about topic sentence, mm -hmm. tone, all of that. Right ma'am. But there are many other things mm -hmm. that are part of the text. Right. Uh, today we will be talking about fact and opinion. Right. Remember all these strategies as you start working on this module. Mm -hmm. uh, in this module we will discuss about the importance of differentiating between fact and opinion. opinion. Identify text evidence, draw conclusions using inference skills. Now inference becomes very important that you have already learnt in the previous modules. Right. So all these things have to be kept in mind. Right ma'am. Hmm. So ma'am, uh, before moving ahead, we should talk about the objectives of the module so that we can make our learners uh, aware what all they will be able to do after having uh, this particular module. Yeah, very well. So we must know our objectives. Right. So after going through this module, uh, you will be able to achieve the following objectives. You will be able to differentiate between fact and opinion. Identify text evidence in passages. Draw conclusions from your readings. And develop the skill of intensive reading. reading. Apply strategies to summarize the text. Right, so right. this is what intensive reading is all about. Right. That you understand what is a fact, what is an opinion, mm -hmm. what do we infer out of it, mm -hmm. right? So all these things will help us summarize the text also. Right ma'am. So let's begin this module keeping in mind the importance of being active all the time when you are reading and using the strategies that you have learned so far. It is useful therefore before you start reading try to actively remember what you know and do not know about the subject as you are reading to formulate questions based on the information you have. Yes, so let us continue. Huh. Being able to read text carefully to find the information 
it is a vital skill for life. Morning till evening, we are reading something right. or the other. Right. Whether it is newspaper or a poster or mm -hmm. a notice mm -hmm. or some letter. Mm -hmm. So, we have to develop this skill for life. Right. The more you read, the better informed writer you would be. Right. You see, reading and writing are connected in a way. Right now. If you are a good reader, you will be able to write better. Better. Reading is a skill that needs practice. Reading for pleasure is a great way to practice. It doesn't matter what you read, but it should be something you enjoy and find interesting, humorous or entertaining. So it is important to understand and be aware of what you are reading. While reading, it is sometimes hard to identify whether a given expression is a fact or an opinion right now. because of the way it is written. Right. So therefore, we really have to read very, very carefully. It is essential that you are able to accurately distinguish between fact and opinion, right. especially for higher level reading comprehension. Right. This applies across the curriculum. You are reading not only your English textbooks, right. you are reading so many other texts across the curriculum, social science, science, mathematics. So this will help you understand those texts as well. Right. In doing so, you will be able to evaluate the reliability and usefulness of different Text. texts that you read every day. Right. Written materials such as articles, website information, biographies and newspapers often contain both facts and opinions. opinions. Being able to tell them apart will help you judge the validity of a writer's ideas. It will also help you choose appropriate sources when doing research or looking for more information. When do you look for more information? Right. When your teacher asks you to hmm. bring more examples, right. go to the library, right. find more articles written by this author mm -hmm. on this topic. Right. So then you have to be uh, you have careful. To research. Ah, right. You have to do research. You have to be careful about the difference between fact and opinion. opinion. Now let us talk about fact and opinion in detail. Right now. A fact generally refers to something that is true and can be verified. These are the two things, right. okay? True and verified and proven to be true if right. you want to prove it. Right. While an opinion is a personal expression of feelings that cannot be proven. Others may agree or disagree with an opinion, but they cannot prove or disprove it. Right. This is what defines it as an Opinion. opinion. Opinions can be based on facts or right. emotions and sometimes they are meant to deliberately mislead others. Right. Be careful. Therefore, it is important to be aware of the author's purpose and choice of language. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the author lets the fact speak for themselves also. One way of telling the difference is to look at the language used to introduce the information. In particular, look at the keywords used. So what is the first step? You have to look at the keywords. Right. Now. Look at the title. Mm -hmm. The title will give you an idea right. that what kind of words will be used in this right. write-up right. text. Notice the keywords used here to introduce the facts. Right. We are doing an activity over here. Right. The experiment has demonstrated that test results confirm astronauts have recently discovered. Hmm? Now look at the keywords used to introduce opinions. The first example was about facts. Fact. Now here we are taking an example about Opinion. opinions. The party claims. Right. They just claim it may right. or may not be true. True. Right. It is generally believed. Mm -hmm. It is generally believed. Mm -hmm. But where are the facts? Right. Right. Most experts think. 
-hmm. They think like that. Mm -hmm. But where is the data? Right. Okay? To prove. To prove it. Right. Remember, your ability to distinguish between fact and opinion will help you develop your critical and analytical skills in both reading and listening. listening. Why reading and listening? Because reading and listening are input skills. Right. You know, we receive input. Right, ma'am. Hmm. So, ma'am, as you have already talked about fact and opinion, mm -hmm. uh, now how do we distinguish between fact and opinion? What all key words and what all kind of aspects we have to take care while mm -hmm. having the differentiation between fact and opinion? Okay. A fact is a statement. Right. That can be proven or checked. checked. Right. Hmm? A fact may include supporting evidence. Mm -hmm. Fact can have evidence, right. research based data, right. okay, mm -hmm. such as statistics mm -hmm. or quotations from a recognized expert. expert. It may involve numbers, dates, testimony. Mm -hmm. Always remember, facts provide crucial support for the assertion of an argument. argument. If I am saying something, mm -hmm. there is an argument. Right. I must have details, right. data mm -hmm. to support it. Right. Hmm? Right. Let us take an example. Mm -hmm. Can I request you to read the example? Sure, ma'am. Yeah. For example, I pay rupees 8000 monthly as my car installment. Hmm. So, now read the questions to identify the facts. facts. Okay. So, the first part is can the statement be proved or demonstrated to be true? Mm -hmm. Then second, can the statement be observed in practice or operation? Can you see it happen? Mm -hmm. Third, can the statement be verified by witness, manuscripts or documents? Mm -hmm. Now, there are three questions. Right, ma'am. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So, is it a fact or an opinion? What does it look like? Ma'am, according to this particular example, I would say it is a fact. Yeah. Reason being? Mm -hmm. The uh, statement. Yes. The statement. I pay mm -hmm. rupees 8000 monthly mm -hmm. as my car installment. Mm -hmm. It's a fact. Right. Because it can be verified. Right. Because you are paying this installment. Mm -hmm. Monthly. Monthly to a bank or some other office. Right. Right. You have the receipts with you. Right. While an opinion is a statement that tells what the writer thinks, right. believes right. or feels about. about a subject. It cannot be proved true or false. You see, by themselves, opinions have little power to convince. Mm -hmm. hmm? Right. Words that signal an opinion are according to, mm -hmm. I think, right. in my opinion, right. perhaps, right. it seems, right. ought to, should be, Mm -hmm. Must be, mm -hmm. bad, good, better, worse, excellent, terrible. We use such words with our opinion. opinions. Hmm? Right. Let us take another example. Example is, my car installments are too expensive. Hmm. Now, what is this? Too expensive. Right. This is an opinion. Right. As the word expensive cannot be verified. Right. Okay, it may be expensive for him. Right. It may not be expensive for, for some, other, some person. other person. Very right. Now, let us read the short paragraph and identify facts and opinion sentences. Mm -hmm. Now, this is for you, Heman. <laughs> Please read it. Sure, ma'am. <laughs> so, the first stanza is, mm -hmm. flowering plants that are native to the south include purple corn flower and rose verbena. Mm -hmm. Then, second is, in the view of many long time gardeners, these two plants are an essential part of the southern landscape. Mm -hmm. Then third, trees that are native to the south include a variety of ox as well as flowering dogwoods and redbirds. Mm -hmm. Then the fourth, dogwoods are specially lovely with their white, pink and coral blossoms announcing the arrival of spring. Mm -hmm. Then the fifth, for fall color, the deep red of the Virginia 
willow makes a spectacular show in the native southern garden. Mm. Now, let us check the answers. Right. There are five sentences. Right, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some are Facts. fact. They are mm -hmm. stating a fact. Right. And some are Opinions. opinion based. Right, ma'am. So, can we go back to the sentences? Right. Let us look at the sentences one by one mm -hmm. and we will discuss. Right. So, the sentence one. One. Flowering plants that are native to the south include purple cornflower and rose verbena. Right now. So, this is a fact. fact. Right. That means these varieties are there. There. Next one. In the view of many, long time gardeners, view of many. Mm -hmm. Remember. Right. We had given some words, some, some words. phrases which right. are used with opinions. opinions. These two plants are an essential part of the southern landscape. Right. So, this is a? This is an opinion. Yeah. This because is Because it is having the word view. View. Right. Yeah. Trees that are native to the south include a variety of oaks as well as flowering dogwoods and red buds. Right. So, this is a fact. Right. So, they are there, they are native to the south. Right. Next one. Dogwoods are especially lovely with the white, pink and coral blossoms announcing the arrival of spring. So, what right. do you think Heman? Ma'am, I think it is a fact because it is stating it is announcing the arrival of spring. Ha, spring has to come. Right. There is no other oh, way. Right. Okay. Now, the next one. For fall colors, the deep red of the Virginia willow makes a spectacular show in the native southern garden. Right. Hmm. So, I think it is an opinion because yeah. it is saying that deep red of the Virginia willow makes a spectacular show oh. in the oh. native southern garden. Yeah. So, it may be it an opinion. It is somebody's opinion. opinion. Right. Somebody is writing about it. Right. right. So, mm -hmm. in short we can say mm -hmm. that out of all these five sentences, uh -huh. Statement 1, 3 and 4 can be considered as fact right. and sentence 2 and 5 can be considered as an opinion. Right, perfect. So, now let us begin with identifying textual evidence. Right now. Hmm? As a reader, it is important to be able to find textual evidence used by an author to support claims made in the text. Right. So, that is an important thing. Please mm -hmm. remember. Evidence is defined as the details given by the author to support his or her claim. To better evaluate the author's argument, we should be able to determine the evidence from the text. This will allow us to validate the assertions of the author and our own counterclaims as a response to reading. reading. Evidence can include the following, mm -hmm. right? facts and statistics right hmm? objectively validated information on your subject, subject. objectively validated right next is opinion from experts leading authorities on a topic such as researches or academics academics and personal anecdotes generalization relevant and objectively considered mm -hmm. Now, let us look at this example and identify the evidence used to support the main idea. Uh, Heman, could you please read the example for the students? Right, sure ma'am. Mm. As our land fills grow into large mountains of junk, it has become apparent that we need to take action. Every year, thousands of water bottles are thrown into landfills where they do not get recycled and they do not decompose, thus further adding to our society's waste. Now, these sentences support the argument that buying bottled water right now. destroys the environment, right now. Hmm? Right. helps people stay healthy, mm -hmm. makes finding clean water easier. easier. Now, which statement is correct as per the passage, MCQ? Right. As mm. per the passage, mm. I would say most uh, appropriate uh, answer, answer is huh? the first one that is it destroys our environment. Right. 
So, that is how we have to decipher. Right ma'am. Okay. Let us move on to the next reading strategy, drawing conclusions. conclusions. Let us remember that authors do not always state the point or main idea of a paragraph in a topic, topic sentence. sentence. Sometimes they imply or suggest a main idea through a series of specific statements that combine to suggest one general thought right. having it to readers to draw the appropriate conclusion based on the paragraphs content and language. In such a situation the best way to prepare to draw insightful conclusions while reading is to understand the best forms of evidence. Let us look at an example. Right. Now let us read the paragraph and answer the questions and then we will be able to find, find. the steps. Right. Yeah. And so, the paragraph is for you Heyman. Sure ma'am. Kashish opened the box and put all the pieces out on the table. Mm. All the pieces would go together to make a picture of a beautiful butterfly. There were 16 different pieces to put together. Kashish looked for pieces that looked like the butterfly's wings. Soon she had four pieces put together. She could not wait to show her mom that she had finished it all by herself. Yeah. Let us try to decipher it with the help of questions. Mm -hmm. What is Kashish doing? Mm -hmm. What evidence did you see to draw your conclusion? Mm -hmm. hmm. So ma'am, uh, the answer to your first question is right. Kashish is putting together a puzzle yes. because it is very clearly mentioned in the paragraph also. Yeah. Then the answer to your second question is huh? there were 16 different pieces to put together. Yes. So these were the two things. Right. But it has been put in a different way. Different way. Right. Moving on to the next topic. Intensive reading. Mm -hmm. hmm? As the name suggests, it involves reading in detail with specific learning aims. One of the benefits of intensive reading is that it enhances reading comprehension. Right. Helps in understanding sentence structure mm -hmm. and develop critical thinking mm -hmm. to answer all required questions after reading. reading. So, I think this is clear to the students right, that you know we have to read the text by keeping all these aspects in mind. In mind. Then right. only we will be able to comprehend it in a Completely. better way. In a better way, yes. Right. Hmm. So, ma'am, as we come to the end of this module, hmm. can we look at one more reading strategy so that okay. uh, it will help our learners to read in a better way? Okay. Being able to accurately summarize a reading to someone else is the ultimate demonstration that you have understood what you have read. Right. right. So, summary. Right now. Okay. Hmm. We call it annotation. When right. we ask our students to read a poem, mm -hmm. we tell them that you annotate each stanza. Mm -hmm. So, when you are reading a text, mm -hmm. if you can put it in a nutshell, mm -hmm. in a summary, mm -hmm. that means you have understood, understood the it. text. Right. Always remember that the strategy of summarizing is a helpful way to show comprehension because one has to organize and recollect the information they have gathered from the reading as well as making connections. connections. Okay, One should not miss out on any point. Right. Let us take an example. Uh, there is a paragraph. Read the paragraph and choose the statement that best summarizes the passage. passage. So, okay, Heman, let us yes. do this activity. Right ma'am. So, the paragraph is as follows. Rachita is spending the summer at her aunt and uncle's farm in the village so that she can experience something different from her urban life. The first chore her aunt assigns to her is to diffuse organic grains in front of the chicken coop at 6 a.m. every morning. Mm. This provides forage for the chickens. It does not take Ruchita long to learn that it is best to diffuse the grains quickly and get out of the way 
unless she wants the chickens to come packing her way. Now, which statement best summarizes the passage? Let's look at the statements. Right now. Ruchita goes to the village to stay in her aunt's farm and does a bunch of chores. Right. Ruchita goes to live on a farm and quickly wishes she's back home in the city. Mm -hmm. Ruchita visits her aunt's family in the village and gets a quick introduction to farm life. life. Ruchita feeds the chickens and learns how to quickly get out of their way. Right. Now, which is the correct one? Ma'am, I hmm. think the third statement is hmm. appropriate. Okay. Because which one? Third, that is huh? Ruchita visits her aunt's family in the village and get a quick introduction to farm life. That's right. right. So, this particular statement mm -hmm. best summarizes the passage. passage. Very right. Hmm. So, let us sum up now. The purpose of reading is comprehension. Right. Without comprehension, reading can be a frustrating and pointless activity. Right. It is no exaggeration to say that how we develop the ability to comprehend what we read has a profound effect on our entire life. Right. So choose good things, good literature, right. good stories to read. Right. So one should not neglect reading because it develops one's mind and enhances creative ability. Remember, reading ability is determined by many factors and requires the development of certain skills. Therefore, using these strategies taught in different reading modules will come a long way in enhancing your reading, reading skills. skills. So, I hope this module will definitely help you in understanding what all reading strategies you can use while reading and uh, by following all these uh, strategies as ma'am has mentioned in the module we are very much sure that it will definitely enhance your reading skills. Yes. So, have a happy reading. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy reading.